and it's quick off our time. <laughs> and today we are going to do something uh, special, something out of the ordinary. We would like to show a little bit of the inside how we uh, proceed with homeworks from the students. A lot of people are right now asking if we were able to ever switch to online. Unfortunately, me and Darek will work very, very hard on making these classes in a, in a, in a structural, physical form. And we are afraid that due to experience that we got teaching both online and physically, uh, an online format would just not cut it. So that is right now the most frequent asked question. Uh, maybe in the future we'll dedicate a whole episode on it as we are receiving a lot of questions so we could like make an episode that would clear all of these questions out. Today, however, we are going to go through some homework done here by Sam Shendiapin. I'm, I'm so sorry, man, if I'm butchering your uh, last name. Sam was part of the fall 2020 term. It was a very, very hard term for all of us because it was took place in the middle of the pandemic. However, people that still were able to come, we really, really appreciate them for doing so. It really showed how much people are actually willing to go from one country to another to make their dreams realize. And uh, Sam, I think, made amazing, amazing leaps forward, improving his skill. Just to let you know how he was drawing first, this, this was his drawing from week one. Later, he was able to uh, make drawings like like this over here, right? So, um, you know, there is a lot of improvement here. <clears throat> However, I am very, very hard to satisfy because, well, I like to push our students forward. Here we are going to feed back one of the submarines that was uh, done as a homework exercise. It is a study of a German U-boat. was a World War II vessel being a very deadly weapon sinking in all the supply ships coming from uh, from America for a very long time until the radar was uh, developed by the British this ship over here was wrecking havoc on the on the seas uh, well let's not go too much into history although that also helps your designing skills just so that you know uh, we're going to talk about some technical aspects some proportions uh, some design flaws fundamental things that could have been done much and much better right so this will be like an example of how i normally do um, feedback rounds for all of our students in class again that happens on a very individual level as well so that people can make the most out of it at the same time feedbacks are done in a way that other students of course benefit from it hence this video right so so you just know how we are dealing with uh, with with feedback in class maybe by doing this feedback over here i might help you out as well you know so uh, here we go overall let's uh, let's let's assess this picture overall what the, what the good points are i like the accuracy overall i like how the lines are being kept clean overall perspective seems to be on point right However, I would again, and I told this Sam a lot of times, to always support your drawing by showing me the, uh, the perspective grid, right? So I guess the perspective grid I'm making here, the horizontal lines could be something like this, right? And then you can clearly see that uh, after a while, the perspective over here is getting a little bit uh, off right where i'm looking at these like when i take it at these panels he took a lot of his time to make these panels you know nice and detailed when you zoom out it all looks sleek and nice however i do have a feeling that um well i think that this so this is the perspective that we are looking for actually yeah see so I always have to back check uh, what, what I'm doing. So hold on, let's just make this one brighter over here. So we will be able to see the perspective um, much more clearer, right? Uh, just like this. I made a new layer here on top. And let's do it the faster way this time, right? I started here with my perspective, but let's uh, back engineer the perspective quickly on top of it right that's the first thing you want to make sure 
perspective is a, is a very tricky thing. You always want to make sure that you're drawing in the right, correct space. The reason for that is as a concept artist, you'll have to be able to communicate your forms clearly, efficiently, so that the rest of the team can take this information and, and make your work um, well, useful, make a model out of it, right? Um, here I will just put this grid on top of it, according to the according to the perspective, right? Will be something like this. Well, it's very fat, but you know, move this one a little bit up. And oh, we're almost there. Whoa, that's some major artifact. Something is wrong with my with my video card, I guess. Holy shit, I never had this. Of course, that only happens when you're recording. <clears throat> hmm. Okay, well, something like this, right? Does that see? Yeah, that is all right. Although I made the lines here, of course, too thick. All right. Um, with this over here, we can now back check the, the perspective slightly, right? And we can see that here the lines are lining up, whereas here we start to lose them a little, a little bit, right? So these panels start to not be perpendicularly aligned with, uh, with the perspective. And I have a feeling that this command hop over here is dipped as well, like this, right? And it should be more aligned. You can easily always fix that by selecting this area over here. Copy, paste. Oh, well, feather was on, so let me turn that off. Feather was still for some reason, I don't know why. Do this again. If, I think if I would flatten this a little bit out, you would have a much more re a realistic representation of you know how the perspective should actually go, right? Just by skewing it a little bit. When we see this basket over here, the same goes for this basket, right? Um, that with the um, with the handles around it, right? So if we go to the to the U boat here, and then squeeze this area also a little bit, and you'll see that boom, you'll have a much more better representation of the perspective. Of course, you'll have now to fill all all these white spots in right finish all your lines but um, you can see that around the where the complexity happens the most mistakes happen um, let's go back let's copy this go back in history yeah like this so we have the full opacity because there are some things that I really would like to talk about more here. Um, it's not only the the perspective that we that have some issues with. Like like you can really see now that the lines here, right, should be more like this, right. So when you see the end point here where the railing ends, and you look to the other side, right, that kind of makes sense, right. Uh, we look at here, that kind of makes sense. But here, you know, these lines start to have their own world, their own dimension, basically. It's something you really want to avoid because that gives away amateurism. It gives away that you're not able to properly communicate your own design. And, and this is not even uh, your own design, right? This is still a study. You're studying an existing vehicle. All right. Um, other things that are really worth mentioning is when you have a round object going around a rounded shape like this over here, be very careful again with the perspective. Here it really again looks like as if this is skewing upwards, right? Whereas I really believe that um, when we paste in the perspective grid, <clears throat> let me see if that will still work nicely. Yeah, that will still work nicely. 
Let's make the perspective grid a little bit uh, less aggressive this time. Make here a new layer. <clears throat> Um, I really believe that we could, you know, make something like if you just erase all this. It's very hard to make overpaints on, on sketches, by the way, because it can get messy very quickly. That's why the physical aspect is so much um, appreciated, I believe. Right, and then, of course, not the same resolution, but needs to skew nicely around it and I'm imagining here that there is a nice dip here right and you can always showcase it with an extra panel maybe even if the real U-boat didn't have it uh, let's see because we have some pictures here of course I came all prepared you can see that the canopy here the command hub has some panels the panels serve you know as a sub detail and in your sketches you can use it for two things to introduce uh, detail I'm sorry for the low resolution, you know, it's very hard to find pictures of U-boats, by the way. Uh, you do it to introduce detail, and the second reason why you, will, why you want to introduce paneling like this is because you can kind of reinforce the shape that you are making, right? So when I'm going to make this round form over here, I want to kind of uh, back it up with my paneling that it is the shape that it is and you, can, and you can see that this shape over here could also use some more love by having it uh, fixed and corrected into the right perspective and to the right curvature right so there you go yeah so much things to talk about so little time i really want to make this quick art talk times uh quick uh, I spoke to Derek about it as well. He might uh, do his own feedback sessions uh, of them as well. Because I think this is like the next step that could be valuable for, uh, for well, first of all, for our students uh, and for people that really would like to have an insight how, uh, how we kind of work, even though I still feel limited when I'm doing it here in the office all on my own. Anyway, the next thing I want to talk about is the accuracy, right? The accuracy of this design is something to uh, be, you know, to you have something more to desire from if you want to make it a, a proper study. The reason why we do studies is to embrace for what the real world is. In order, before you even try to attempt to design a vehicle on your own, it is extremely important that you are able to, within the foundational knowledge and skill, make a study of a vehicle that exists in the real world. Uh, just to keep it short, it really will just make your believability uh, of, of vehicles and knowledge, it will raise to another level. You will be able to study the, the, uh, the, the details, the designs, how every panel connects. Also studying vehicles from different eras, Second World War, First World War, Cold War, it will give you the insight and knowledge how panels and how engineering developed over time, right? Uh, welded steel versus, uh, versus uh, casted steel. All these things took place according to a set time. Uh, tech, the technology, for example, of welding steel was also improved over time. And you can show that in your concept, right? So... Um, that's why we do studies. So the accuracy. The accuracy is something to be desired for because we have here, for example, detail that has been, um, well, copied nicely, right? I can say that the detail is accurately represented. I really love how Sam here um, took the time to really go over the, even though I can see that this is uh, copied, but you know, it, it's all nice, right? It's all sleek and the end result matters. However, the, the whole structure of the U-boat, it's not really following the real form factor, right? And um, I gave Sam a very hard time in class about it. In the end, I think he was grateful. And not only Sam, it's like it was a very common problem with everyone. And I'm happy that everyone became better at it later on. Anyway, what we see here is, you know, that the service overall here feels flat, you know? And that is because Sam kind of, I think, when you're a when you're a beginner, especially, 
you will feel taxed by all the details and overwhelmed by all the details that are taking place, right? Uh, what should have been done is, um, let's just make here a duplicated layer. Okay, so that doesn't work. I can just maybe, so that also doesn't work. Why are all the things not working when I'm trying to, uh, to record. Okay, it's working now. Let's make this a little bit brighter. I just forgot that everything's popping up on a different screen. I have here a new setup. So, there you go. Okay, so the, the whole structure here needs some love and work. As you can see on this reference image, we can we can see that you know the the, the design language of this U-boat is very interesting. Well, that is the exact reason why I took it. Um, later on in the weeks, we study real live hardware that has you know a mixture of man-made tight lines, like you can see in the panels, but at the same time it has a very organic form. And organic form here is really for the for the functional aspect of this vehicle. Again, something that is you know, too much to talk about right now. Um, however, it creates for a very good exercise to mix hardware details that are, you know, crude, hard edges. You can see the German design language of the Second World War being incorporated here in a very nice and iconic way. At the same time, it really has this nice bubbly fish rounded shape to it. Something that I cannot see in this design over here. Another aspect that I would like to talk about is, uh, you know, you can see how long this design is. And here, because of foreshortening from this camera angle, the ship appears to be much, much shorter. However, if you if we take on, um, do we have a side view here somewhere? Uh, we have, let me pick maybe a side view. Hmm. We just had a side view somewhere here. Hmm. You can see from the side view how long it actually was, but as always, you know, I open all these files, I have them, but I get also overwhelmed pretty fast. Uh, so, well, here you can see, you know, uh, from a less aggressive camera angle, how long the ship is, although this is a different type. So I, I want to stay here as accurate as I can. This is a crop. It's, again, it's very hard to find full images of, of this ship. And this is even like a scale model, so it's not even real. As you can see, it is very hard. This is the rear side, so you can see how long the rear is, you know. And this is another camera angle, which is less aggressive and less foreshortened, because here the surface of the ships move kind of in front of the camera. So here we can see how long the ship actually is. Um, all right, back to the structure. What we can notice of the structure is, let's take these two reference images, all right? Because on both of them, you can see how, you know, how rounded the ship actually is, right? Um, let me just... It's very important to digest the forms beforehand you, you draw them, right? And you can even sometimes draw on top of the image just to get an eye on how it is being um, how it is being shaped, right? Right? So this is basically my green lines here are basically if I what would happen if I just cut with a laser through it, right? Like this is the shape that I would get, right? So you're back engineering your shape, right? Not only seeing what you draw, but really understanding it and putting it into the three-dimensional world, right? In our physical world. And our physical world consists of all kinds of physical objects that uh, take place in a three-dimensional world, which we live in. And that is why it's so important to uh, make a good, believable reinterpretation of that. Here we can see that from top view, I don't have it again at hand, but from top view, this design slopes to a certain point, right? And here Sam did it correctly, right? Here we have a thicker shape and here we have a thinner shape. And you can even see clues on the side how it goes, right? Because if you would cut here, then the shape looks something like this, right? 
and it doesn't have the double bubble form here because that double bubble form ends somewhere here, right? You can actually see a clear outline and the bigger one ends somewhere here. However, it is being very rounded over here, something that I don't see here, right? He incorporated the detail here, but it is not as round as it should be, right? So if Sam just did this, right, and digested the, uh, the shapes correctly, he would have an easier time, right? So just by making an outline sketch, uh, you'll be now ready to make those details in a much more solid way. So if we just make this even brighter and start drawing on top of it. And we sometimes also in class do like prolonged feedback sessions, right? So we like draw on top or paint on top uh, the student's work. But just to show here quickly what I mean is that we have here a nice detail, right? Let's go back in history so we have the clarity. Here we have a nice uh, nice line where the panel ends. Just so. And uh, here it's like kind of... And it's not as long as you can see. <clears throat> Like, and and it and has these rivets, right? So you want to also give uh, thickness to those rivets, um, those those shapes that are um, that are defining the whole structure, right? So what I imagine is, you know, that this goes like this, right? It is a rounded shape that goes around it. And with line art, you can kind of um, suggest that detail, so to speak, right? <clears throat> Sometimes uh, flipping your image from the other side will give you a better um, angle to draw from, like so, you know, so you have uh, so you have a nice contour. Uh, doesn't hurt your elbow and you'll just be able to make more uh, lines in a faster way. And here I'm exaggerating the shape, basically, as you can see, I'll explain what I just did there. Here I'm doing basically because I'm drawing a lower resolution, but what I did here, you know, because this end point has thickness, you know, I'm slightly, because line art is all about, you know, giving away structural information. And when I am do, do kind of, and I give it a shape like this, then I want to back it up when the curvature of that shape happens, right? So that's why on a zoomed in level, you want to do something like this, right? And not just continue and make it like a curved sausage. But really, this is then really the shape that it, that it makes, right? So you give it here a slight beveled edge, right? Yeah, again, on this point, students then ask, you know, what is uh, what is the deal? What do you exactly mean? Some people don't understand it right away, you know, so I can like walk over the desk, help everyone out. So that's, that's always nice. Uh, so, yeah, this will be an example of how to tackle that form. And I kept it, I think, in better proportion as well, because here Sam made it very small. You can see that here it kind of has a thicker ending. I think I made it too big anyway, so we can always adjust that. Be always careful of your studies, right? Make it make it as proportionate as possible, right? When it comes here to the smaller bubble form, I guess, you can... Uh, uh, well, let's actually flip it too so I can have a better... We can, we can see what shape it has and it is not the shape that uh, Sam drew here. Here he made it look like a sharp bullet, whereas in real life it slopes nicely down, right? It has an incline like this, and on the top side it has an has an has a positive uh, curve, and here it is a more of a negative uh, curve. That happens because this 
bubble is laying on top of the thicker bubble over here, right? So that's why if you melt a cylinder into another cylinder uh, with a sloping end like this, then you get this form, right? Because this surface over here is more flattened out, right? So that is what happens here, right? <clears throat> something more like this and then we continue the form nicely right and so yeah and uh, maybe some other stuff that I would really like to see from Samir is that I would like to see better line definition I told him that of course as well for example, making the guns uh, better defined. And you know, like this level of detail is all right. However, what you can always do is, you know, use line weight again to your advantage, right? To use, for example, thicker lines on the bottom, thinner lines on top. So you can, for example, make this gun pop out better, right? Uh, make these details slightly less interesting. Uh, when it comes to line art details, use variation in your line thickness, right? Because that is the way to um, showcase that there is actual depth in your sketch, right? You can make it slightly. I'm not here like listening to, I'm not looking here to the real gun, so it's just like a fast example of how to achieve detail relatively quickly by applying some line weight over here right and here maybe it will have like a armored mantlet around the the structure right here would have some bolts and the bolts alone would have some line weight to them curvature right so I'm showcasing the curvature a little bit with that armor plate and here, of course, the, the superstructure, the, the platform, or when it stands on, basically. <clears throat> uh, yeah, when you zoom out, it kind of, like, see, like it, it takes better shape just by applying a little bit of line weight. You can, like, uh, make the line thicker here below the armored skirt there. Apply more line weight on the bottom of the cannon, and uh, there you have it, right? So when you go back and you uh, kind of compare the two, then you can, you can see that, you know, because he's using here, like, the same line thickness, he actually like made this because he's using the same line thickness he even made this endpoint blackened out right but by just using you know by doing the gun barrel actually in a more simplified way right just by having um, here you know just a gun like this and just by doing that you already kind of suggesting that you know there is a hole so you don't need to make especially when you're drawing on a smaller scale you don't have to go all the way around and draw this in because then it will just you just blacken out the whole area right so these are the things that i would love to uh take uh, note of next time you know stuff like the anchor right like i know that he's able to draw it better but i guess uh yeah like make it three-dimensional right like there are flat details on top of it and stuff something that you can achieve also in a sketchy way but with practice you'll be able to make this form look more uh, physically pleasing these this anchor looks like two dicks kind of like poking out of it looks like three dicks actually um anyway uh, just to end this uh, feedback i would like to not for show off um, purposes but just like how i managed this sketch this was recorded in class and you can see that i kept it also very sketchy but here for example the anchor uh, you can see it's kind of very messy right it's pretty messy but i am avoiding you know flat shapes i at least want to give it a, a suggestion that it is a three-dimensional object right you can do a maybe even better job of it by uh, making sure that this actually uh, looks like a chain 
right, that goes around the anchor here and give it some more line definition, right? And here the bolts, I try to give them also three dimension, right? Those two fat bolts that are, that are standing out, right? Whereas here, the two bolts are just like flat circles, right? That, you know, um, don't make much sense. Here they're kind of good um, because I see three dimensionality in it. But the line width should take place um, on a on a on a different on a different angle because light probably comes from the top. So you want your bolts to catch more shadow on the bottom here, right? So you make a feather line here on the bottom. Just don't know why it's not blacking it out more. There you go. Right? So when you're making a like a, let's say that we have some couple bolts here, you know, then just, just make it like this, done, you know, ship it next. Right? See see the difference between these two and, and that one, you know, where the light is like he's using fatter lines sometimes on the on the top, so it looks like he doesn't know where to apply line weight in a, in a better way. Here I could also have done it in a better way. Here my, my holes are actually not as taken care of as his, right? I'm just make it faster. When I do these in class, it's uh, it's sometimes tricky to get it, to get all the details right. But here I definitely could, you know, uh, as well, uh, make, it, uh, make it a little bit fatter, right? Just the outline, just the silhouette, right? <clears throat> and yeah, I think um, that will be it, you know? It's, uh, well, it's almost 30 minutes. Uh, but yeah, this is how long sometimes uh, feedbacks can take, also depending on, you know, um, on the student's level, how many questions there are, etc., etc. Um this is kind of the thing that uh, that we do along with lectures, along with demos, uh, many other stuff that uh, uh, that benefit uh, all of us, you know, us and definitely the students, um, us in a way so that we can make better classes in the future. And yeah, hopefully this uh, gives you like a nice insight, a nice sneak peek how um, how we work. So what can we clearly learn from this, right? Uh, fundamentals, right? Always keep track of them. Uh, proper structure, so use the right thickness. Again, here we can see, you know, the, the, the thickness of the lines is all over the place. When you zoom out, we lose kind of the structure, right? So again, you know, the, the, the hatch over here, instead of being drawn like, you know, sloppy sausages or something, we can uh, you quickly just make a... Mm make a quick example All right it's like it's like I would love to you know uh, spend more time and just and here we have then you know the that detail that goes here on top I, I don't know the reference but just by looking just by kind of digesting what Sam tried to do there I am I'm making my own version here, like this detail would kind of pop out. And here I would add then, uh, you know, the, the the joints of the hatch that make the hatch uh, open, you know, and then here is the attachment on the deck. So, you know, that would be uh, much better. Here, make this line maybe slightly thicker because it's an outline, right? And make the lines where it actually connects to the deck thicker because that's where the shadow would be and then when you kind of like zoom out you'll have like a, a slightly better representation right and, but it's just like what 30 seconds you know so you can kind of see the difference the structure right structure very important so yeah foundation structure and, and working accordingly to the proportions so that you are able to make a proper study of an existing vehicle because if you cannot do that then yeah, good luck uh, designing something believable that should be on par uh, on the industry standard that is uh, getting more demanding um, by a year. So yeah, uh, don't neglect the fundamentals, guys and girls. Take care, stay safe. And uh, by the way, we're open for registration for uh, the 2021 term. So hit our website, 
uh, your interest, of course. And uh, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.